All right, guys, so Miss Hannah and I were sitting here discussing the difference between the word famous and infamous because we were going to do the intro to the C4 that sits behind us with the security light on, and we're deciding, is it infamous security light or a famous security light? And uh, so we looked up the definition. Infamous is what highlights the bad quality. It's the famous bad quality. And then famous was something else. I don't even remember what. But I think we determined, yeah, famous, known about by many people. So I think we, it's safe to say that we have the famous, infamous security light on this 96, is it a 96, 94 Chevrolet C4 Corvette. Sits back here. Uh, got towed in on the flatbed and the security light is on. And I was just going to fix it and ship it, but I thought I'd bring you guys along. So this is the style key that goes in this car and more than likely most of you probably know this already but this key is kind of some old school i think gm called it the vats system uh vehicle anti-theft system and it has a resistor built into the key so when you insert the key into the lock cylinder there's a little little dongers in there that actually goes in and it reads the resistance of this key uh the resistance of the resistor rather and then that signal is sent to a central timer module, or some people call it a VATS module. But in this car, it's a central timer module that lives in, under, in the dash behind the radio. And once that receives the unique uh, uh, resistance that this key or this vehicle is programmed for, then it sends a signal to the PCM and gives it the thumbs up, and everything starts uh, technically. And I think they make only about like 15 or 16 different. Uh, resistors that you can have and the keys. So like I said, it's kind of old school, uh, you know, security type stuff. Um, so let me show you what's going on so you guys can kind of see the symptom. I'm going to show you the fix. Um, I've already got the little thing prepared. In these cases, uh, these cars are old and the easiest way to fix them is just to bypass them. This security system is super cheese dog. So there's no sense in you know, going in the column and either fixing the broken wires, if that's what it is, or the worn out key, which it is in most cases, or the worn out lock cylinder, yada yada, when we can fix it for about 50 cents. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that. So we come inside here, put the key in the ignition. Uh, can you guys see? You can't see. Let me, uh, let me see now. So we got the blinking security light and the half dead door dinger. So when we turn the key on, if your security light stays on solid, uh, you are going to have a no crank, uh, or no start, no crank rather, to be terminologically correct. How do you like that word, Anna? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> busting them all out. So if that security light's on, it's no beans. Um, you push the clutch in, and you got nothing. You know, just just nothing. And then you're locked out for three minutes. So then you gotta sit there and wait. You know, you can put your key in and out and fiddle with it and try to get it to uh, get the security light out. Uh, I did have the scan tool hooked to it uh, where we could read data in the central timer module. And when you put the key in, you can tell if it's valid or invalid and all that stuff. But I'm gonna show you a quick way to bypass these. Uh, we'll let this sit here and time out. I'm gonna show you one more time, turn the key on security message regardless if the key is right right now because we're still in that uh, you know breakout period or timeout period so let me show you what we can do all right so we'll get miss hannah to hold our ohm meter here what we're going to do is we're just going to check the resistance on this particular pellet in this key and often you'll find and i think this is the case here that there's only certain spots on it that are going to make contact we can see right there. Can you guys see that? Got to get it just right. So we're at 1.91 kilo ohms, so 1,910 ohms. But this pellet is kind of hard to get a get a good contact on. Sometimes you get very erratic readings, and I assume that's what the car is seeing too. So it's like right there is like 12,000 ohms. But I found on average, when I was messing with this thing, yeah, the 1.98 1 
kilo ohms was the most consistent. So about about 2,000 ohms. I don't know how sensitive these systems are. There's 1.98, 1.96. Uh, I don't know what their tolerance is as far as you know what's acceptable and what's not. But I'll show you how I fix it. You fix it with one of these little guys. So we just come over to our uh, resistor assortment, which is unorganized and unlabeled. So you have to have that, and then you have to have one of these so you can look at them. <laughs> Figure out who's who. We've got a little color chart. This was all made for me by a viewer, uh, which is super handy. Uh, he's actually my, my dishwasher slash clothes dryer slash washer repairman too. And uh, he got me one of these kits uh, put together for me. So that's super handy because I used to have one just kind of willy nilly. Um, so what I've done is I went through and I picked out two uh, 1000 ohm resistors that have a 5% uh, tolerance. So it should be pretty good. And I'll show you how I put those together. So I've got them right here. I just went ahead and soldered them. So I took essentially, now these aren't 1000 ohmers here. Oh, actually they are. <laughs> actually grabbed the right ones. So we've got our uh, regular resistors. I just took and peeled those off. I took two of them, twisted them, soldered them together. Let me see if I can get you uh, a close up on that. Uh, essentially just soldered them together there in the middle uh, and then uh, you know put them in series. That way there we would have approximately the same resistance as our key and then left us two pigtails. And then that should allow us to hopefully loop these around and we're going to put this in place of uh, there's two wires running out of the steering column I'll show you in a wire diagram that actually reads that that pellet I guess that's going to be called or the resistor and we're going to put this in place of it and that's going to give us our you know our false key but false but consistent anyways so we can take this and I'll show you we can measure the resistance on this. It should be very similar to our key. Do all that again. Can the people see him? It's all about the people. We can see our resistor there is at 1.93 kilo ohms. Uh, and that should be very, very close. Close enough for our purpose, I'm thinking. So let me see. Is that the wire dagger? Yeah, I got the wire dagger right there kicking around out here um, so we can see here on our wiring diagram let me get let me get a pointing device uh, let's see we've got the uh, so there's our key there's our resistor pellet you know like we've talked about uh, and essentially we're gonna be looking for this purple with white wire and the white with black wire and then like I say they come down to the uh, central control module uh, behind middle of instrument panel but actually it lives uh, behind the radio you can see it handles a few more inputs. Um, what all we got? Key and input. Lock, unlock, security indicator, all that jazz. Uh, so we'll find this set of wires on the GMs. I think I've seen them. They usually run down in a uh, solid um, loom, I guess, for lack of a better term. Usually orange or yellow, I think. This one has an orange one. I think I've seen them yellow before. But that may be airbags. I don't know. Don't go blowing yourself up. Uh, but there's a connector into the dash. We're gonna go, I'm gonna show you how to install this. Make sure our security light goes out and uh, get this baby shipped down the road. On this particular car, you gotta remove the uh, little hush panel here. Our data link connector is hooked to it. We had another wire hooked to it, uh, to the light there. So we just take that off. We're just gonna kind of shimmy that off to the side. I don't wanna mess with the uh, data link connector. So we'll set that up there. Uh, I got my light there. Let me show you where the connector is under the dash. It's a point of reference. Obviously, we got the go pedal and the whoa pedal. And this is our harness. And we can see, uh, like I said, this one's got an orange sheath on it. Now, this was just tucked up on uh, up under the knee bolster here. Um, so we've got a little pocket screwdriver. We'll pop that apart. Now, granted, you can go ahead and, and fix these. I'm not saying they're infixable, but... It's almost, almost kind of a waste, really. Uh, so we'll leave that unplugged. Now this is the um, lock cylinder side, so this goes back up the column. Uh, in you know this, like I say, they're prone to breaking at the uh, flex where the uh, steering column flexes. You know this can only take so many times, and the wires will break, and they'll give an invalid signal. 
uh, in this case, uh, that is not the case. Uh, this is kind of an intermittent, uh, you know, key. So we could get a key and a lock cylinder, but what we'll do instead is we're gonna take, and to kind of preserve this, is we're gonna take and we're gonna cut this. Yeah, you guys are gonna flip out, huh? So we're gonna cut this back here. So that way there, if it ever wants to be put back uh, factory, it can. We've got, you know, the uh, male half of this connector. So that's what we'll do. Here are cutters. We'll come right under here and we'll chop it up. We'll take and uh, give ourselves plenty of pigtail left to, uh, like I say, if it ever needs to be repaired, it can be. We'll take and we'll stick that right back on there. And then we'll uh, take and fold them over. We're gonna make sure they don't touch. They can't touch, not that it would matter. Uh, just good good practice anyways. We'll put a, uh, I'll probably slip a little, uh, little piece of heat shrink on it, just kind of lightly heat shrink it and uh, stick them out of the way. We'll just set them right there for right now for this purpose. And then I gotta move my camera. You guys are always getting up in my way. So then we'll take this, we'll strip that back. We'll strip that one back. So we've got our two wires going to our central control module. And then we're gonna take our resistor that we already pre-assembled and we're gonna stick it inside a piece of shrinkable, shrinkable stuff here. Shrinkable crimp connector. Because we don't want the uh, resistance value here changing. So we're gonna try to protect that. So we crunch that down. Make sure that's solid. Come around this side, stick it in. It's for you. Okay. We'll crunch that down. I'll go answer the phone. We'll be right back. And we're back. So now, we'll very gingerly slip it up in there. Taking and bring it around down. Slip it in like so. Give her a little squeeze. Okay, so before we go heat shrink that, we probably ought to make sure the car runs. It's been more than three minutes, right? We can see our blinking security indicator, so that's normal. We'll take our key, mind you, again, that it is completely unplugged. This is not some kind of trickery. We can see now our security light is out. I hope it's in neutral. There we go. Came in on a tow truck, going home on its own. That should be like our theme. Came in on a tow truck, going home on its own. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna so end with that saying. Don't forget it. But you can see now, security light goes out every time, regardless of the key. So technically now, you know, you can go down to the hardware store and get just a regular, you know, old school GM square cut key without the resistor because it is no longer needed. So. Everybody's happy. Let's see the blowtorch. Now we'll come under here. We'll heat shrink these down. Get a little tube here. Like I said, that'll keep them from ever ever touching and becoming a different resistance value. Now granted, I mean, those resistors could go bad, certainly. Um, at least if they did, you know, somebody's gonna have some direction anyways. You know, they're gonna come down here and see, see what we did. Chances are it'd be me anyway, so <laughs> I guess it really doesn't matter. So I'm gonna let that solidify, we'll do the other one. Uh, like I said, we'll take care of that other half of that connector. And uh, get this, uh, I'll just take and wire tie this up to the harness. 
And, uh, and I guess that's it. There's really nothing more to say. All right, guys, that's it. Super simple security system on your C4. Super simple security on the C4. Down by the seashore, picking seashells. Sounds kind of like a tongue twister. Uh, and that's it. Uh, so we'll give it back to this guy. He can crank up the Sammy Hager and get the six by nines thumping while wearing some tight leather pants and taking his chick to the IHOP. I don't know. I don't know if that's what guys do nowadays. But uh, we fixed the security forward slash bypassed it. Uh, what else did we do? We learned the definition of the word famous versus infamous. And that's about it. Um, these security systems are simple uh, and easy to bypass and avoids a lot of headaches in the future because I'll be honest with you, these keys were a disaster. So that is the easier fix. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comment box below. Uh, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet and you like these kind of videos and other videos where we rip stuff apart, diagnose stuff, uh, blow stuff up on occasions if things go wrong. Um, Check us out on Google Plus and Facebook. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. So thanks for watching.